Hello everybody, it's me, Ghost Critic, and I'm here with a comic book haul, a little extra video for the bank holiday weekend that us in the UK have just had. We've had an extra day off work, so I went over to Leicester and um, managed to pick up uh, a decent stack of comics, nothing too wildly exciting. Um, it's all modern age stuff. It came from a shop that we have over here called Forbidden Planet. They're all back issues that they throw in like a 50p long box hidden away in the back of the shop like they do. The only thing about these comics is that they put little kind of lines across the barcodes to denote that these are like the cheap 50p comics. So if you're bothered about that kind of thing, they pretty much damaged your comic. Um, however, for 50p and for what these are, I don't mind picking these up. Um, what I thought I'd say quickly before I show you the haul is, um, obviously it has been a bank holiday weekend, uh, which usually means my new comics don't get delivered to the shop till a day after regular new comic book day Wednesday so don't be surprised if you don't see a new comic book day video on Wednesday but I'll certainly upload it the next day if that is the case right these are the comics that we picked up I'm going to start off with all the Marvel stuff now I'm trying to not actively but if I see them I will I'm trying to grab all the last Marvel big events, Secret Wars, Battle World titles, all the, merry, all the many spin-offs that they had. So when I see them, especially when they're ridiculously cheap for 50p like this, I grab them. Um, I need to make a list of every single title that there was just to make sure because I did manage to pick up a couple that I'd already got unfortunately. But these were the ones that I managed to find. This is Secret Wars 2099. I don't know if you can see, but that's what I'm talking about with the barcode, then putting a line through it to denote that it's um, 50p. So like I say, it kind of ruins the cover in some way, um, but for 50p, I'm not gonna cry about it. Um, issue number two of Thor's. Um, issue three of Ghost Riders from the Battle World spin-offs, um, all centred um, around all the different type of Ghost Riders that have been um, over the time. Issue number four, uh, great fun title, kind of racing against each other, then trying to break free of the of the Baron, which was um, I believe was Arcade or or he was just running the races, I can't quite remember. But it was a fun little mini on that. Um, Ultimate End, issue number two. Some um, Hulk action going on in that one. Issue three of Star-Lord and Kitty Pride. Um, another kind of fun, kind of slapsticky book there. Uh, Hail Hydra, issue number four. Um, 1602 Witch Hunter Angela issue number two. Really like this series. Um, the kind of the really nice artwork going on in here as well. The stories kind of supernatural, paranormal. There's issue number three of the same title. And I guess this kind of was going alongside of it, or this was in a different other kind of nation of um of our battle world but we have Angela Queen of Hell issue number two uh, issue number four of House of M Marvel bringing back some of their past kind of mini type events and reworking them uh, in a little way um, can't get more silly than uh, Modoc Assassin, that's issue number four. Over the top violence, unlikely allies, um, issue number five of the same series. But that was ridiculously fun. Uh, Where Monsters Dwell, uh, Garth Ennis' um, take on a kind of, um, is it 1920s kind of, first world war type of um, 
airplane fighter crossed with a little bit of um, Indiana Jones lots of nudity both male and female so issue number five but he just doesn't have any luck at all in this series I didn't really enjoy the first couple of issues I think having read it all in one go now it kind of reads better and I enjoyed it a little bit more uh, Future Imperfect, issue number three. Again, another reworking of an um, Incredible Hulk past storyline, one of their classics. That was all the Secret Wars Battle World tie ins. Um, I picked up Electra, issue 11. I think this is the last one in the run. Basically, got this because of the Mike Del Mundo artwork, which is gorgeous in here. And also the last issue of Daredevil, the last series from Mark Waite and Chris Samney, issue number 18. And that was it for The Marvel. There was a few DC Vertigo type titles. Um, picked up issue 25 of Earth 2 World's End. I've been picking these up when I can find them. I really like them using the kind of Jack Kirby fourth world characters so that's basically why I've been picking this up. It's been a fun kind of blockbustery type DC storyline that I don't think many people really got on board with and don't blame them too much but uh, it's fun and when you can find it for 50p why not? Um, I thought I'd try Effigy, issue number one from Vertigo, when they started throwing out all these new number ones. I read it, I didn't really get it. It's kind of centred on these, um, this, this old TV kids programme, kind of sci-fi link. But now they're older and they've all kind of parted their ways. Some of them have done better than others. Some have had to go home um, to their hometowns, kind of like with their tail between their legs. Um, uh, maybe it's just because it was the first issue, uh, maybe I need to read some more of this, but it didn't really hit home with me. Fortunately, I only paid 50p for it. Um, trying to find these as and when I can, because I wish I'd picked this up when it first started and put it on my pull list. Unfollow. This is issue number four, because this is a cracking good story. Love the whole kind of social networking vibe of it. If you look very closely at this issue, it's made out to look like kind of Apple uh, tablet. You've got the like little button up there, right at the top, if you can see, there's like a little camera hole. Uh, really dig that whole vibe. Uh, 140 people get to share all this money, um, but some of them, if any of them die or are killed in any way, then their share of the money gets given to and separated and shared between everyone else. Great kind of storyline there. I'm going to have to try and find the other back issues for those. I've got issue one, which is a great start to this series. Um, heard people like um, Oddfellow's Thoughts. I think I heard Sleepy Reader 66 talk about this, but I found issue five and six of We Stand on Guard. I think this was kind of a a civil war between America and Canada. That's issue five and issue number six from Image. Um, the last issue of Airboy, issue number four. Didn't pick this up the first time it was went round, but uh, got quite a lot of praise um, centering on actually the two uh, main creators of this, which were James Robinson and uh, that's it, Greg Hinkle. They actually kind of are characters within this. Um, but I've heard great stuff about it. Saw issue four, which is the last issue, um, but 50p. Uh, Chip Sadarsky's Captara, issue number one, and I found issue number three and issue number four. Bit crazy out there, kind of sci-fi, fantasy, Conan, aliens. Uh, there is no kind of genre you can stick on this book. Very strange, very chaotic, uh, very silly, but um, it was fun enough to read. Uh, quite a few Dark Horse from here. Uh, Mike Manola's Joe Gollum, Occult Detective, issue number two of five. And I also found issue three of five. But that was a good interesting story that I'd quite like to pick up the rest of issues on those. Um, always hearing uh, people talk about Baltimore, so I found Baltimore, The Cult of the Red King, issue number two. 
then issue number five. Uh, from Boom Studios, the first two issues of Last Sons of America. Um, this was uh, interesting. They were kind of trying to go with a kind of Brubaker and Phillips vibe, give it that crime noir type look, but to me, I think they kind of missed the mark a little bit. The story is interesting. We have this, I guess it's a kind of near future. I don't think it's set exactly in the present. But we have these two guys who buy children to sell to, I believe, the Americans. All the kind of rich people, for some reason, can't produce children anymore. So they buy them from all these poorer countries. Um, unfortunately, they, um, they kind of run out of people to, um, this is issue two, uh, to, to kind of buy off. So they start kind of grabbing people off the street. Unfortunately, they grab the daughter of one of the big mob bosses. Um, I don't know how that ends. Maybe if I find the other two issues for as cheap as 50p, then I'll probably give it a go and see how it ends. Uh, the last two books here, I've got Clive Barker's Nightbreed. I know Custom Bromstar Scott spoke about this. He did a video all about it, the whole series. He's got the whole lot. I pick this up again on a whim and obviously he recommended it. The artwork's a lot of fun in this. I'm not the biggest Andrejko fan uh, but the story from what I read of this issue kind of moved along quite well and it was uh, um, quite humorous actually in, in certain bits but um, yeah that's that one. And finally from IDW issue 3 of Little Nemo Return to Slum Slumberland very much aimed at children um, and kind of pre-teens but there is something delightfully um, imaginative about this book very cleverly kind of constructed um, from um, Eric Shanoa and Gabriel Rodriguez um, the artwork in this is just a delight to, to look at but that was my kind of bank holiday haul. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you Wednesday, but if not, it will definitely be Thursday. Bye-bye.